This is a very sad day for America. Former President Donald Trump speaking to reporters before boarding his plane moments after leaving a federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., where he pleaded not guilty to charges that he conspired to overturn the 2020 election. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt, and we're also following a big story here in San Diego involving our military. Two U.S. Navy sailors arrested on charges related to national security and ties to China. I am live along the Embarcadero, just one spot in our city where you can feel the huge military presence. And here is what we know so far. The Justice Department says the two sailors are accused of providing sensitive military information information to China, including details on wartime exercises and naval operations. One of the sailors is a 22-year-old assigned to a vessel right here in San Diego. The other is based near Los Angeles. It's unclear whether the two cases are connected in any way. And we have team coverage on this still developing story. We begin with ABC 10 News reporter Austin Grabish. He is joining us outside the federal courthouse downtown where one of the sailors answered to charges this afternoon, including espionage. Good evening, Kimberly. 22-year-old Jin Chao Wei appeared calm as he was arraigned in a courtroom behind me this afternoon. The FBI and NCIS say he gave critical secrets to China, and tonight they tell us this is the first time someone in San Diego has ever been charged with this crime. Tonight, a San Diego sailor charged with espionage. Jin Chao Wei sat calmly in a khaki jumpsuit as a prosecutor outlined the case against him. He is accused of betraying his newly adopted country by stealing national defense information and selling it to his Chinese spymaster. Wei was an active duty sailor on the USS Essex stationed at Naval Base San Diego and allegedly started sending sensitive military information to a Chinese intelligence officer in 2022 and kept sending the secrets as recently as two days ago. He is one of two California sailors facing charges tonight. The second is stationed in Ventura County. Mr. Zhao used encrypted communications to send the sensitive information. The information included details regarding various aspects of the U.S. Navy's operational security and activity. According to an indictment, Wei was approached by the Chinese intelligence officer while his application to become a U.S. citizen was pending. He was born in China and admitted to his handler his actions would be considered spying. But he still took bribes in exchange for photos, videos and technical manuals that few have access to. The indictment says he sent the locations of Navy ships, described defensive weapons, and even gave information about Marines. The unauthorized disclosure of this national defense information could place the national security of the United States and the safety of Way's fellow U.S. Navy sailors in jeopardy. I asked justice officials if Way joined the military so he could give secrets to China. That his intent was to provide information to China, that he, that he did do so. The prosecutor in this case told a judge that Wei told a fellow sailor he was obviously being recruited for, quote, effing espionage. Wei entered a not guilty plea to the charges. The U.S. attorney called his actions a betrayal to this country. Reporting live outside federal court, Austin Grabish, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Austin. And one expert calls the damage to national security spelled out in these charges very bad. He tells ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen the case is the latest example of China aggressively <coughs> spying on the U.S. China is unrivaled in the audacity and in the range of its malign efforts to subvert our laws. A stark pronouncement by Assistant Attorney General for National Security, Matt Olson, as charges of espionage were announced for two sailors, including Patrick Way, a local sailor based on a USS Essex, security expert Ron B. It's highly classified, and it's, it's a very bad leak. Way is accused of accepting bribes to send more than 50 mechanical and technical manuals of ships to a Chinese intelligence officer. B says it's not surprising China would target the Navy, the forward presence for the U.S. in the areas where Chinese interests lie. China is looking to develop any military edge it can find against the U.S. Navy uh, in case there should be a conflict 
uh, no matter small or large, over Taiwan or the South China Sea. The espionage cases come six months after the U.S. shot down a high-altitude balloon owned by China drifting over the U.S. Inside it, according to U.S. officials, was intelligence gathering equipment. A month ago, U.S. officials acknowledged China has been spying on the U.S. for years with a listening post in Cuba, now alleged spies in the Navy. It says that there is a, maybe not a full court press, but certainly a court press at all times to try and get information that would be useful to the Chinese military. B says with tensions with China climbing during the last two administrations, he expects the Chinese spy games to continue. As the criminal cases go on, an equally important investigation is now ongoing, digging into how China turned our sailors. What were you able to find out about the facts in this case as it's laid out? We know every detail is going to count. Uh, how they were turned, where they were turned, what type of language, all of that will be critical. Counterintelligence folks will try to get at that information to determine how to prevent this from happening. Again. All right. Thank you, Michael, for that reporting. Great report. And in a case involving espionage, capital punishment is always in the conversation. But the penalty for a conviction on such a serious crime depends on whether our country is at war at the time. And even during wartime, it's still rare. The last known case was Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, who were executed for passing secrets about the atomic bomb to the Russians during World War II. And the government used the 1917 Espionage Act to seek the death penalty in that case, which allowed capital punishment for convicted spies during times of war. The more likely sentence for convicted spies is the protocol for peacetime prosecution of espionage, and that's anywhere from decades in prison to life. Many times the length of sentence depends on the cooperation of the defendant with the government. And coming up